Those Damn Ross Kids is a podcast for adults, and the opinions we express do not reflect the opinions of our employers or even ourselves. If you would like to support the show, go to duckfeed.tv slash tip jar and check out our Patreon campaign. I'm back. Neat. Neat. I'm here. I'm anxiously awaiting a delivery of pens. <coughs> what? There's a pen that I like. They're really expensive in a store. They're cheap on Amazon. It's a nice pen, man. (laughs) They are nice pens. Stop giving me shit. Those Damn Ross Kids. A conversation between brothers. Featuring Chris and Cole Ross. What, what kind of pen is that? What's, it's, what's it called? It's a, it's a, it is a uh, Uniball Jetstream. A Uniball. Yeah. Oh, I stole one of those from you. They are nice. <laughs> you cock. I stole all of those from you. Yeah. I had three of them at one time, and my last one just broke on the trip. So I just ordered, I ordered six of them. That's have. what I keep in my pocket. It's a good pen, right? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Take good care of it. No, I don't think I got it from you. No, <laughs> I, although I need to, I need to call everyone I, I've had sexual contact with and let them know that I have Uniball Jetstream. <laughs> I just, you just explode with ink every once in a while. <laughs> You're like an octopus in that way. Every time you get anxious, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> how, how do you, how do you think they stop people from shoplifting octopuses from the zoo? Shot, well, cause for, first off, the zoo isn't the, uh, the store. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris, the heart of comedy is yes and, right? So when you start poking holes in my dumb sentence. Uh, it has stores. Yeah, generally. yeah. Where, where you can buy some astronaut ice cream or a slinky. What, how are those zoo related? Why are they there? Chris, every... Every every gift shop has the same shit. It's like it's like every you know every uh, like drive-in diner kind of has the same paperware and the same uh, uh, fries, right? Yeah, I just say it's 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 all the same supplier. There is there is a, a company that just whenever whenever you build a museum, they'll come to you and say, hey, it, 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 you know, it kind of looks like you want to sell um, a bunch of rocks in a little velvet bag. So here's a bin full of rocks for you to uh, comb through and then buy. Here's they one. Here, here's one they, of those tubes that you can't hold on to. Right. Yeah. Paperweights, yeah. coffee mugs, steins for some reason. <laughs> Chris, you have to cover you have to cover your drinks. I exclusively drink out of steins. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I see those at the thrift store, they always just look so filthy. Yeah. There's a lot of like, moving parts. Lots of little like crevices and folds. A little bit too a little bit too ornate. I would want For to run, me. Run, run it through uh, run through an autoclave every once in a while. Like any any kind of like drinking or eating vessel with a hinge is a uh, it's it, it is it is a dicey proposition. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey Chris, what's your name? <laughs> That's what I, I'm not fat. I'm more Nate. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Chris. My name is Cole. What episode is this? Episode number one hundred fifty five of the Internet Comedy Podcast. Those damn Ross kids. That's correct. We're here to entertain your asses. Yeah, did you? I have I have links. You have you have stories this time. We're I not went just to the a, zoo and bought a lynx. <laughs> if, if by bought you mean stole, and if by stole you mean one escaped and latched onto you with its claws, right. then yes, you you bought a lynx, or you bought an Atari lynx, and you're playing Aliens versus Predator on it. Let me just say now, I haven't seen my neighbors in days. <laughs> cool right yeah why why is that because the lynx ate them okay cool so hey this was supposed to be on last week's deal because it was on the front page of gawker okay 
which was actually it came from Valley Wag, and I'm sure it'll show up a couple other places. Yeah. But evidently, there's some drama in the in the in the tech and gaming world between the man and the woe man. Yes, Gamergate is uh, is what people are calling it. Okay, well, this is not about that. So rest easy, because I don't want to listen to you go on about that for the next forty five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, let's, let, let's keep this, let's keep this in there. Like we've, we've, we talked about it a lot on the level. We've talked a lot about it, um, on pretty much every other show that's related to games. If you can't guess where we stand on this issue, then I'm really sorry. Right. Yeah. But see, here's the thing is that there's a guy named Blake Francis. He's the founder of the question and answer app need. He tried to buy favorable press from a female reporter by sending her, by actually taking her a gift basket. Okay. Showed up in the hotel lobby. Actually, it was the lobby of her work. I'm sorry. She works for the Chronicle. It was after hours. He said, you haven't responded to my emails, and I wanted to get your attention. He brought this basket. It's a wicker basket filled with um, sex toys, lube raw oysters and tequila jesus christ and didn't understand why that was inappropriate why 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 is everybody looking at me like that oh boy those are those are big guys in uniform coming after me oh they're descending on me they're descending i'm tased i'm tased ow ow what's wrong what's wrong miss andry stop you hate men stop yeah oh, blah <laughs> The female reporter has since commented, Francis didn't seem to grasp that sex or a woman's sexuality isn't a, to- a topic appropriate for, for a professional setting. Yeah. I think that, that so, that's a... That, 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 that's your tech, Cole. Yeah. It's, it's not my tech. I, I, I want to dislike... So this is something that I noticed uh, that, that, that I've noticed over the past like six months, right? It, even just in doing pre-pro for this show, like you'll know you, you, if you if you've paid attention to the kinds of stories we select, like there's been substantially less like science and tech news because it's it's ceased to be you know the conversation has ceased to be dominated by cool things that will make people's lives better or like interesting curiosities that uh, you know will 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 benefit you in some way by knowing about them, and it's more about. Uh, social question and answer apps that are you know being evaluated at a billion because maybe they're going to take off in China and also incredibly gross people who um, you know want to replace the world as it exists now with a with with this <sighs> hyper efficient dystopia where everybody drinks nutrient sludge and the tech and the the, the technorati um, will you know ride on top as the new, as the new monarchs. It gets really, really gross, really, really quick. And uh, Valley Wag is a great site to watch if you just like immediately, immediately want to hate the fact that like at one at one point you thought a smartphone was like a really good point, you know, a good thing in your life, which it totally is. Like it's irrational to say things aren't better because of you know this you know the, the, this technology, right? Like oh, it it lets you do more stuff, right? But um, but boy, oh boy, is it just getting like inward and backward and just just gross in a lot of different ways. I'm sorry. You didn't want me to go off on a rant, but I totally did. Yeah. I mean, I guess I just don't understand where this guy gets off thinking he can take alcohol in the workplace. I know, right? It's it's, it's, not, a, it's unprofessional. It's not like Mad Men, Cole. It's a, you know, this Chris. Times have changed. Times have changed. You know, so, some workplaces like mine have alcohol, like you know, just institutionally available. Like it's more it's more prevalent than water. However, you know, you have to respect that. You have to know you have to know about their policies on alcohol before you take it in there. I think it contributes to a to, to a moral decay. It's a rot. It's rotting. Mm, I don't know. The rest of it's fine, right? Yeah, I mean, just personal massagers. Like you get tense. It's you know, it's it, it's basically like hiring a masseuse. Yeah, I mean, how, how else are you going to zone in on that one sore spot if it's not shaped like a pencil? <laughs> you know, it's shaped like a rabbit because they are because they're very precise, very active, very nimble creatures. I assume that the hare won that race. Uh, never, never got to the end of the story, uh, but you know, <sighs> man. And do you know what that lube? So you, offices full of squeaky chairs. He's just doing a favor 
for her. She, he says, he says to you, you are a member of the press, and I don't want you being distracted by squeaky apps or <laughs> by squeaky chairs um, as you are writing about my app. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, no, it's. I, I think that that is the way that story uh, ought to have been presented. Um, I think that I think that the the the, the liberal media, the the, the feminist biased um, uh, press out there, um, are, are are really putting this guy uh, in you know in, in, a, in a less than negative light. When in reality, he's a hero. He's he's creating jobs by uh, by by I'm sure doing some fucking social horse shit that uh, doesn't you know contribute anything except to gathering people's data. Fuck you, Silicon Valley. Fuck you. Francis Blake. Fuck you, Francis Blake. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Why can't we go back to olden times? Why can't we have like, you know, actual tech? <laughs> Francis Blake. He sounds like 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 the captain in the regatta that's like sabotaging other boats. <laughs> Just out there, like, just cutting the rigging. Yeah. Yeah. Eight-time regatta winner, Francis Blake. Ha, ha, ha. Be one of Rebecca's boyfriends oh, on Cheers. <laughs> Which one was Rebecca? Was that Rhea Perlman? No. Or, who are you? I I don't know. No, it was uh, the one lady, the the, the Kir- Kirstie Alley. Yeah. Oh, she was Diane's replacement? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not as up on Cheers as you are. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's all on Netflix, aren't. right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't know. Uh, na na. That's not the show. Never mind. Okay. Cool. I don't know. See, I think I think tech really really peaked with the claw machine, Chris. I really do. It's plain simple. It tells you exactly what's going to be in there. There's a little bit of manipulation behind it, right? Um, but if you are, uh, if you know, if like, I, I, I feel, I feel like young people, you know, especially children, are innately like in tune with life hackery, right? They, you know, they, 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 they're, they're aware of efficiencies. They're allergic to bullshit. They see systems and they say, I can get around that in order to get the toys that I want, such as, uh, such as this, this eighteen-year-old. Uh, sorry, not eighteen-year-old, eighteen-month-old who saw a claw machine. Uh, he was out. He was out with his grandma and then decided to climb up inside it. It's a common to catch a predator mistake. <laughs> what setting this up claw eight, machine honey this traps? Eight, this eighteen month old, eighteen year old. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I slipped. What did I do, Chris? What did I do? <clears throat> yeah, there's not really that much of a story to this, except for the yeah, fact yeah. Except when you're, you're done with them, you just jam them in a claw machine. <laughs> <laughs> there for the next one, <laughs> a claw machine with kids. <laughs> <sighs> at a pedo bar yeah well see that like it, it gets super hairy because because the way the way claw law works um uh, like anything that passes over that threshold immediately becomes the property of whoever wins it so like once that kid gets into the general prize pool he's fair game like that is like the easiest way to lose custody of your kids and nobody talks about it no, nope, no. I mean, they talk more about losing your kids at poker, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you want to you want to make sure Violin Jimmy doesn't break your legs, which I think Violin Jimmy is actually the is, is the full name of Violin J from uh, the Insane Clown Posse. Which why someone would take a kid as collateral on a poker game, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a huge responsibility. Here, you raise this. Exactly. Yeah. What's that? A full house? Yeah. And why are these people always like trying to win money to afford shoes for their baby? No, daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Oh, okay. I thought it was. I thought it was baby needs a new pair of shoes. No, no. <laughs> I might be no. thinking of an episode of Rugrats. <laughs> no, it was Muppet Babies. Okay. <laughs> Kermit needs a new pair of shoes. His legs are just flopping around out there. I've said all that I want to say about this. I'm glad. It's your turn to talk. Uh, oh, no, I know. I know. I'm just deciding on which way I want to take this. <laughs> what is CCTV, Cole? Uh, closed circuit television. CCTV. I think, I think I need to know. Yeah. Um, C- oh, it's a... CC it's DeVille the, is, the, is the guitarist for the, uh, for the Scorpions. It's Chinese television. Chinese... China Central Television. Okay. It's China, Chinese government. It's C-SPAN in China. Okay. Everything happy all time. 
Mm. Um, uh, season they of have, was with poison, not with not with the scorpions. Sorry. Continue. They have some tips for Chinese people trying to choose an English name. Because apparently Chinese people like, can do that for their like, for, for for their D and D characters. Uh, I think it's just for like you know being called that. Okay. Because it's it's cool and it's hip, I guess. Yeah. So so, so some of the tips that that this Chinese central television states says um, you're generally good to go with respectable names that come with implications of wealth, such as Elizabeth, William, or Catherine. Try to stay away from old-timey names like Gertrude or Percival. <laughs> Food names such as candy, sugar, or cherry are, quote, not smart girl choices. And also run the risk of sounding like, quote, stripper names. Likewise, avoid names that have a blatant sexual connotation, such as creamy and dong. <laughs> this, is, this, is my, this is my Chinese friend, Percival Creamy. Or anything Creamy that supplements Percival. anything that supplements Wang. <laughs> they, so they have to be educated on the uh, on, on the on the sensitivity of the Wang issue. <laughs> the, the notorious Biggie Wang. <laughs> okay, um, like, like like what augments Wang? Like 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 Dong Wang? No, There's like a, Dirty Wang. Oh yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is my buddy, Dirty Chicken Wang, <laughs> Dirty Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, nothing for chicken wang, huh? Okay. No, no, I, I was I was saying my own joke. <laughs> now you know how it yeah. feels. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, if you're looking to rebel from conformity, go ahead and personify objects like dragon, fish, or lawyer. However, <laughs> don't be surprised if you get many uh, if you get many confused or amazed looks from foreigners. Avoid those names if you want a callback from that serious law firm in America. <laughs> Hi. I'm your lawyer. Lawyer. Um, yeah, stay away from famous names. You've got a lot to live up to if you adopt Madonna, Einstein, or Obama. <laughs> Mythological or religious characters, Satan, Jesus, Hercules, Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> That's fiction. That's not myth or religion. Are similarly questionable. <laughs> A good way to work out the feeling, the feeling of a name is to watch a bunch of American movies and sitcoms. They're full of name stereotypes. The good girls are all Jane. The jock boys are still buds. And the geeks are called Sheldon. This is remarkably practical advice. Continue, if there is more to continue with. There's just, there's one link off of this. It's a 25-year-old Swedish guy who says he has the longest name in the world. (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's, it just has uh, has instructions for a loop inside of it, so it's ten hours of wah 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 wah. His last name is Ek E K. His first name goes a little something like this. Uh oh. Kim Kim Jong, sexy, glorious, beast, divine, dick father, lovely <laughs> iron man, even unique Po Un Win, Charlie Gora Chaos. Megan, Hansa, Kimmy, Hombero, Uno, Master, Overdance, Shake, <laughs> Booty, Bebop, Rocksteady, Shredder, Kong, Ulf, Roadhouse, Gilgamesh, <laughs> Flap Guy, Theo, Arsehole, I'm Yoda, Funky Boy, <laughs> Slam, Duck, Chunk, Jorma, Juka, Pekka, Ryan, Super Air, Ooh, Russell, Salvador, <laughs> Alphonse Mulgan, Acta, <laughs> Papa John Nama. Ek. Papa John. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't go further with the. There's a, there's a rich, creamy vein of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in there. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michelangelo would be too on the nose. A little bit. This this is my cousin Rio Chun Li Guile. <laughs> Guile uh, Theo Arsel. I'm a Yoda funky boy. <laughs> I'm a Yoda. <laughs> See what that sounds like. And this might be the you know the Chris, you know, we're we're always looking for new business opportunities here. Um <laughs> you probably do a Kickstarter 
and whoever donates the most money gets to contribute a little snippet for that name, and then you change your name to that. Each name change in Sweden costs one hundred and eighty four dollars. Oh yeah. So he was just trying to get it to get the most bang for his buck. This is uh, the, the <laughs> this is the the heap tie plate at the all you can eat buffet. Um, he has shorter. Ver- he, he's had other names. Oh yeah, Sh- shorter names. Mm-hmm. Osama bin Alexander, <laughs> Alexander Gargamel Pohatan Genghis. <laughs> Anything yeah, else? So that's a thing. Huh? Sounds delightful. And and he's so they're cool. telling Chinese people to just do that. The only comment in here from the guy says, "I don't always get my mail." <laughs> This guy rules. So that's that. Huh. I've got another story about names, but it's nowhere near as uh, elaborate as that. Um, So there are some just kind of like studies or thought being put out there as hurricane season draws to a close about the effect that uh, hurricane names have on names in the general population. Right. So obviously um, Katrina put a stop to that name. Right. How, right. However, Hurricane Andrew back in 1992, nary a dent in the name Andrew. Nothing like that. And here's the weird thing. Here's the weird thing. After Hurricane Charlie, that name skyrocketed in popularity, except for girls. I mean, they don't call them that very often, do they? Uh, call girls Charlie or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's happening more often, actually. It seems like a porn thing. <laughs> What kind of porn are you watching? Um, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, like uh, uh, Justin McElroy from the My Brother, My Brother and Me. His, uh, his little girl's name's uh, Charlie. Um, I have a I have a friend who uh, whose daughter is named Freddie, which is short for uh, Winifred. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's a thing. It's a little bit of a trend, but it's a thing. I don't know. I'm going to go from that to an actual story because I feel I feel put to shame by that. Chris, CareerBuilder.com just put out a list of the uh, the most dubious excuses for calling in sick. Okay, I'm just okay. gonna I'm just I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna go up these um, by the uh, let just let, let, let's go in reverse order from number ten to number one Letterman style. I I G. Okay, number ten, employee. <laughs> I can't even get through it. Employee accidentally got on a plane. Oh, where am I? (laughs) What's happening? Where are we going? (laughs) As we established last week, it is impossible to accidentally do anything on a plane. It requires a tremendous amount of effort. You can accidentally be a good human being. Oh, yeah. Just inadvertently. Oh, no. Um, Number nine. Employee caught their uniform on fire by putting it in the microwave to dry. Can't do it. Help. Okay. Number eight. Employee had a gallstone they wanted to heal holistically. I have to. I have to watch. I have to watch reruns of Friends and meet just to just think non gallstone thoughts, please. As I as I drink this tincture. <laughs> right. Yeah. Number seven. Employee got stuck in the blood pressure machine at the grocery store and couldn't get out. Every day. Every. Every day in would, this nation, <laughs> do you know how many amputations have to happen? This national nightmare has to stop. <laughs> if by stuck you mean mesmerized by the video playing in the little LCD screen about diabetes, <laughs> <laughs> just, just just honed in, zoned in on that. Number six, employee had a quote lucky night and didn't know where he was. <laughs> she fucked my memory away. Oh, my God. It was electrifying. She bounced up and down in my memory. (laughs) Number five, employee woke up in a good mood and didn't want to ruin it. That's pretty fresh. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's good. I like that. That's not even an excuse. That's not an excuse. That is like an office space revelation. (laughs) Number four, employee had been at the casino all weekend and still had money left to play with on Monday morning. Okay. Again, pretty good. Like that's just an admission. It's an admission of a problem. That'd be like if somebody called in hungover at work. 
Like if right. you're just, it's just there, there, there's a, there's a, there's self awareness and honesty in that. Number three, employee was sitting in the bathroom and her feet and legs fell asleep. When she stood, she fell and broke her ankle. Have you ever done that? Oh my gosh, it's upsetting. Like can't like just kid camping out, working on a working on a project. Yeah, I, I mean I've had my I've had my legs fall asleep on the toilet. I mean to the I mean really pretty much for the past couple of years, I don't shit without my fun noodle headband. <laughs> I just saw I re- it on Pinterest. I re- <laughs> I removed all the all other fixtures from my bathroom. It is just a toilet on a tile floor with with a drain in the middle of the floor and a spigot on top. Nothing I can hit my head on. There are no walls even. No, I got I got a, a I got a, a a router with a with a cutter bit that just chamfered everything. <laughs> Number two, employees' plastic surgery for enhancement purposes needed some tweaking to get it just right. Chris, looking good at work is so important. Ooh. Even more important nowadays. I know, right? In oh, with this... all the lube and oysters. <laughs> and number one, employee just put a casserole in the oven. <laughs> well, what, I wonder what that means. <laughs> I, <laughs> there's, there, there's hidden messages behind everything, you know? Now, have you called off and said something that, that maybe could have been on that list? Not really, No. I have. Okay. Do you have a? Do you, do you have an admission? I I called off. Uh huh. Actually, I left for lunch and didn't come back. <laughs> what did you say though? I was filling up my gas tank on my, before I came back from lunch, and the nozzle came out and doused me in gasoline. <laughs> I have to go take care of that. I have. I have to go to go to the hospital. <laughs> I, I'm covered in gas now. This is a now, medical emergency. I actually emergency. have done that. Okay, but it wasn't at that. Like it wasn't at that time on the job. Oh, yeah, I, I doused myself in diesel fuel. Yeah. Got it on my genitals. Well, you were just uh, you were just um, reenacting your favorite scene from Zoolander, though. No, I really did that. Huh? Yeah, I, when I worked at the golf course, they have like the diesel tanks that are gravity fed, like they're up on stilts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was filling a, a mower, and like the it came out, or like I pulled the hose out, and it didn't shut off all the way, mm. and like I poured diesel fuel all over the front of me. It really burns the genitals. Yeah, I can imagine it's an irritant. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I, I've never like made up an excuse. I don't think. But then again, for the past three years, I've worked in an environment where I can kind of come and go as I please, as long as the work gets done. Yeah, but I, I'm, this is like you know when you, when you're defining your work your work ethic as a child. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, in the factory. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, my my <laughs> I, I upgraded to iOS uh, eight and Yosemite, and now every time I get a text message, everything just starts exploding. <laughs> Sorry, if you're hearing lots of if you're hearing lots of dings in the background it's because even though i silence my phone both my uh both my <laughs> ipad and my computer are now uh acting as text alert machines chris it's like living in a goddamn pinball machine <laughs> it sounds like somebody blew up the wave factory <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like somebody's shopping for a ringtone <laughs> it's because it's because i received an automated alert about a deal at a supermarket <laughs> uh yeah no. So, hey, Cole, I got a story about a Macedonian man. Okay. Um, yeah. He chopped off his penis and threw it in the trash. Cool. After his girlfriend dumped him because of his lack of bedroom skills. The man <laughs> told medics he felt his small size penis was to blame for the split between him and his girlfriend. He said, nah, it was useless, so I cut it off. <laughs> you know, Chris, the importance in a relationship, you know, trust is so important in a relationship. And uh, if he's taking her comments, if he's, t- if he's taking your feedback in, uh, you know, in good faith, why wouldn't he do that? Why wouldn't he cut it off? She said it must be true. Well, I, most people won't change for another person. Right. You know, hey, I got rid of the problem. Yeah. Just like, hey, lose a little bit. Of, lose, you lose a little bit of weight. By which I mean you, the, the, you, the, the, you, the you you and me can mash flat. You know, you know, smooth spots. <laughs> mash flaps. Is that what you were about to say? I said smooth, smooth spots. Okay, cool. I kind of wish you would have said mash flaps because that's even grosser. 
They don't put a flap over it, do they? When you when they, as they, Chris, Chris, there there are as many combinations as there as there are what do you, stars what do you in do the when sky. You don't have a penis. Do you just like velcro your sack up, up above your pee hole or what? How, how do you do that? No, I think that I think that it's uh, you know. It's it, a pee it, laying down, Chris. It's dealer's choice. I think you have. I think you have to be hooked up to. A, you have to be hooked up to a machine. <laughs> it's you, you it's to, all dialysis have, all the time from now on. You have to pee laying on your belly. I guess I don't know. Yeah. No. No. It's it's yeah. You know, me, modern medical science. <laughs> like yeah. you were driving. Like you were riding a, a sport motorcycle. <laughs> like it's a massage table. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Strap on your foot noodle and <laughs> send your massage table urinal. Yeah. Man, Chris, all these inventions, all these inventions we're coming up with. There's an amazing video online, Chris. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, I'm I'm impressed by it. <clears throat> it's a local news story about a kerfuffle that happened on Hollywood Boulevard. Chris, the city of lights, the city that never sleeps. Hollywood. La La Town. Okay. Okay. There's a there's a tradition, you know, on the Walk of Fame of people dressing up like characters. Except, well, this video um, appears. Bondage Elmo. <laughs> Fondle me Elmo. Um, yeah, this video appears to show Mister Incredible from The Incredibles um, and Batgirl struggling uh, uh, until Chewbacca in her. Intervenes, trying to break up the uh, their 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 tussle. Um, Batgirl then scratches Mister Incredible, uh, which brings in Waldo and Freddy Krueger uh, to try and intervene to stop this from escalating. They try and hold back Mister Incredible, but he gets loose and chases Batgirl before punching and kicking her and flipping her on the sidewalk. <laughs> Bystanders chase the characters off um, as Batman just stands by and watches. <laughs> Some British tourists say, you've just witnessed a happening. <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> I like I just know that from uh from Man on the Moon after uh after the Friday skit goes wrong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, so so <laughs> we've got Batgirl. Chewbacca, so, Freddy so Krueger. In there, did, did you tell me what they were fighting about? No, there's like nobody the knows. The last hypodermic needle? What? <laughs> the just last like clean to, needle? I like to imagine like the tunnels underneath uh, Hollywood Boulevard just being full of these characters <laughs> who never uh, who never break. Ooh, I want to go see Birdman. It, it, it was, That's just it a reminder. Was, I want to go see Birdman. Continue. It, yeah, it, it was it was uh, Batwoman's turn to wash the needles. Yeah, and she didn't, you know. She was out she, there. She hates Walmart potties. <laughs> See, what's the horrible thing about this? It's a, you, you know, this 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 production company I see happened. Nothing horrible about it. The, but go the, ahead. the production company happened to catch it all on film. It's it's truly a miraculous piece of footage. Um, but when you take the costumes away, it's just an example of horrifying man on woman violence in the workplace. <laughs> Like, Mr. Incredible just wheels back and fucking punches Batgirl. I'm sorry, Oracle. He breaks her legs and turns her into Oracle. <laughs> Somebody laughed at that. Don't worry. You know they're not showing Birdman in this shithole town I live in? They're not? No. Nope. Where's the closest showing? How do I find that out? I, I don't know. I mean, you have, like, what, three theaters up there? Closest showing of Birdman. Hmm. Attack of Michael Keaton. <laughs> How do I now playing Fox Searchlight? I don't know. I don't know how you find that out. Yeah, I just man, why is this so hard? There's Birdman Showtimes. Showtimes. Fandango dot com. It looks like a good movie. Fandango. Hey, oh, that's right. How many miles do I have to drive to see that flick? No, 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 no. Oh wow, it's only showing at the uh, the Esquire down here. Yeah, that's weird. I thought yeah. it had a national release. Yeah, that's where they we did, uh, they did press like crazy. They did. It's it's Michael Keaton. Uh, it's on his way back. Keaton's on the attack. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Oh hmm. well. Oh well. 
but that'll that'll probably end up, end up being one I have to watch at home because I guess it's not showing in this show shit whole town either. Hey, Cole, an, an Alabama mom says her five year old daughter got into a heap of trouble for drawing a picture of a gun and aiming her crayon in a gun like fashion. Okay, little Elizabeth. The five-year-old girl was assessed uh, by the school for suicidal thoughts and was forced to sign a contract promising not to kill others or herself. That'll work. Right. The mom says this isn't right. She's five years old. Most of these words on the contract, she can't even understand. (laughs) (laughs) My my kid's a a a stupid fucking idiot. So your issue with this is that she had to sign a contract she didn't understand. Lady, have you ever installed iTunes? Because you've probably I, you probably signed a contract you don't understand. What's you, Eula? <laughs> Eula? Eula died 10 years ago. Uvula? That's <laughs> in my body. That's at the back of my throat. Yeah, nah, so that that happened, huh? That's funny. There are people. Uh, um, I, I read a version of that story where people were protesting that along the lines with, uh, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, there was a kid I think in Cleveland, uh, a, a Sikh child, um, who uh, ha- had to fight in order Cole. to, yeah, <laughs> easy. What? You can't just call a, call Sikhs a Sikh. <laughs> Yes, you can. It is a child. I don't, that doesn't it's a, sound it's, right. It's a child of the Sikh religion, like Puerto Rican. So, so Sikhism is actually pretty cool if you do any uh, if you do any uh, uh, research into it. It's a it's a nifty religion. Uh, chief, chief among that, um, it, it is in their holy text that uh, that they have to carry around this f- fucking cool dagger to fight off Sikh monster. <laughs> yes, the monster that devoured Sikhs. It's their version of the devil. No, I just I, that, that, that is, we're joking about somebody's religious beliefs. Um, how, however, uh, this kid it's to, it's to protect the Sikh kids from crib death <laughs> from from Sid right. Sikh Sikh Sids. Ugh, I feel gross saying that. Um, no, so 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 this kid. This kid, um, you know, had to fight to be able to carry his dagger, which you know, it's it's a little bit dicey. You know, zero, zero tolerance rules are are pretty stupid. It's just it's just an instance of you know where like where do rights begin and stop? I you know whatever. Um, but then this is the, this story with the girl drawing the drawing the gun is mentioned in the same breath, and people are saying, ah, her religious freedoms being. <laughs> Like, this kid can this kid can carry a can carry a dagger, but this little girl can't re- can't express her religious freedom to draw a gun, which really goes a long way towards saying like, yeah, okay, they're they're finally admitting that guns are part of their religion. Hmm. Basically, yeah, or like maybe it was I think it was in South Carolina where the kid like if, when he was like a freshman in high school. He had an assignment to write a story, so he wrote a story about killing his neighbor's pet dinosaur with a gun. Ooh. And the teacher called the police and he was arrested. That sucks. Yep. Yeah. His neighbor's pet dinosaur Cole. Well, I mean, there like there're not a lot of dinosaurs left. Like maybe they got out in front of some really, you know, so like some really bad, some really bad stuff there, you know. There's birds everywhere, Cole. Chris, you think I don't know that? They know where I'm at, and I know where they're at. Okay, I see you, Crow. <laughs> what is that? Is that Roderick? Yeah, yeah, that's a good show. Just want to let them know I see them. I know where they are. Yeah, I know they're there. You know that they're there. Yeah, I don't know about zero tolerance. <laughs> do you like? Do you, do you run into that as a as 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 the, as the parent of a of a school aged child? Does the did like is there is there literature is there is there orientation around around that or is it just you a lot know, of like, suicide like, going on up here? Yeah, like, like yeah, like okay. So institutional panic about little kids killing themselves or like kids attempting it or just it popping kids following up? through with it. J- Jesus, really? Yeah. Huh. That's sad. Mm-hmm. Like like what age? Like middle school, high school. Huh. 
Yeah, that sucks. It's not a good place to be, really. No, it's pretty blighted up there, actually. Yeah. Hmm. Think think the 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 poverty of Detroit mixed with the violence of Chicago. Yeah. And that and that's pretty much where, you know, I live in Ohio. Yeah. Is that a is 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 Mansfield? Is that is that whole area um, still like heroin capital of the world? Oh, they're knocking it all down up here. Yeah. Hmm. Well, <laughs> they're, I don't understand what knocking it all down means in that context. Oh, they're just, you know, they're knocking down all the buildings so that all the heroin people can't squat in them. Oh, yeah, yeah. No public restrooms. There really, there used to be, you, you've heard that story, right? In downtown Mansfield, Ohio. Mm, uh, they, I, they used to, down in, at the square downtown, they, they had um, underground public restrooms. No, I've never heard that story. Yeah. And uh, there was like this big scandal because they actually the cops did like a, an, a sting investigation in the 50s and they caught like all the like the councilmen and people like prominent businessmen in town were going down there and giving each other like blowjobs. <laughs> you didn't know about that? No, no, I didn't know that at all. Yeah. So the solution was they 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 just like filled them all in with dirt. <laughs> Well, put, in, put, in, put an MLK statue above it. If you see an MLK statue anywhere, it's, it's hiding a, a tradition of of, of uh, gay sex. Yeah, of, that, of, of, a, of anonymous sex. gay hookups. Right. Yeah. Presidents I, of banks. Guy that owns the deli. Man. They, 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 how, how times have fallen. They used to have eyes wide shut, uh, you know, like crazy orgies. Now they're just, uh, I don't know, different times. Mel the Butcher. He owned a landscaping business, but he gave a toothy head. <laughs> this has been Those Damn Roskets. Chris, can I tell them what they can do? Please. Okay. Head over to patreon.com slash TV. Kick us a couple of bucks if you can. It goes a long way towards helping us do things like that live show that just happened um, and also improve the audio quality of the shows. It's a real cool way for you to help. Otherwise, you know the usual stuff, right? iTunes, ratings, reviews, Facebook, facebook.com slash those damn Ross kids. And good old, good, good old, yeah, but you good, good old fashioned telling a friend. Presence? Like, like, what do you want? Like, you can't just say presence without, without giving an example. Um, no, I, you can say presence without giving an example because it's not like I'm making a wish list. Hmm. You know what I mean? That's just, that's wrong if you ask for it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It has to be, has to come from a, from, from a, a thoughtful place. Right. Chris, I think we've all learned a lesson about etiquette tonight. I think we have. Yeah. Sorry, America. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>